This is going to be an advanced accountancy video uh, for Garage Hive, and it's a new method on how to pay supplies at the end of the month. So the method that you're probably all using at the moment is during the either the payment reconciliation journal, you're manually marking the invoices off as paid, um, or you're using the set applies to ID from the vendor ledgers. So in this method, I'm just going to show you um, how we can do this in a much quicker and slicker way. So from process under vendors, select uh, payment journal. And then you need to select the payment method that you would use to pay the supplier. So in this one, it's just going to be a bank transfer from the current account. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to uh, process, suggest vendor payments. And you'll be presented with this window here. So essentially, this last payment date is the um, up to the month end. So essentially, what up to what due date uh, do you want to pay? So if it's month end, it will typically be the last day of the month. In this case, I'm running it for the end of Feb. Summarized per vendor means that each line will just be one vendor instead of it making a line for every single document. I strongly advise that you tick this. The posting date will be the day that you pay the suppliers. So if you're doing your month end payment run and you're paying everybody on that day, then that is what the posting date will be. The document number should be automatic. In this case, I'm going to show later on this video how to set this up, but I'm only, I only want to run the suggest vendor payments for suppliers that have a payment method code of backs. So I'm just going to go ahead and press OK here. OK, so what you can see here is a payment journal, which may be used to, but it's populated with uh, my suppliers that I'm paying by backs. And more importantly, is it's already pre-applied the payment to all the invoices that fall within the due date. So if I select AAG, for example, and select Apply Entries, you can see it's already applied to all of the payments that are due. So I don't need to do this bit uh, manually anymore. What I would then advise that you do with this file here is because at this point in time, you probably haven't yet paid the suppliers, but these should be the values that match the statements. So what I do, um, I select all, so all the lines, and I press Control C. You see 25 rows copied. I then advise that you uh, go to Excel, and you can paste the file straight into Excel. So if you're good with Excel at this point, you could import this um, into your bank um, system, or you could just use this to run through and apply the payments to these suppliers on your bank account. Once the payments have actually been made, um, it's then okay for you to post this. So if I now go process post, this would post all of these payments against all of these suppliers out of the bank account because that is the uh, payment method that I selected. You can see the balance in account here on the right hand side. Now, when you come to do the bank reconciliation, instead of doing what you would normally do, which is then apply the payments individually or apply the payment to the account, you simply just reconcile the payment that's already been made in the system. Now that will make sense the first time you try it. And in actual fact, when you import the bank statement, um, the system should automatically find the payment for you. So there is there's no longer that stage in between if you get this right. Obviously the key to using this feature is you need to make sure that your um, vendor ledgers are reconciled before you do the suggest vendor payments. So to set this up, there are a couple of things that you need to do. Um, I'm going to just open any of these uh, cards, for example. So let's take Euro. So if we scroll down, uh, you can see here, now this is the key. This payment method code is set to backs. Now, to do this, you will need to create a new payment method code. Don't use any of the pre-existing ones, and I'll explain why now. So if I select from full list, you can see here that some of these payment method codes have a balance in account. The problem is with setting a payment method code to a vendor card with a balance in account preset in the payment method is whenever you post an invoice to that supplier, it's going to pay the invoice off using that method. So you can imagine if you set one of your main suppliers up to automatically be paid off, it's going to cause absolute havoc. So what I advise that you do is make a new one completely. So to make a new one, you just select new. I'll just call this one test and we can say test in, in your case you'd probably call it backs or whatever you want to call it but the key is leave this box blank because it allows you to have a payment method code on a vendor 
but it won't pay the invoices every time you post an invoice to that supplier. I can't stress how important this is. If this doesn't make sense, uh, then please just ask one of the support. So in this case, I've made this one up. So I set that to this supplier, which means when I run the suggest vendor payments, I can filter that report to only show me the suppliers that have payment method code of backs. So another feature um, is the priority. Now this is really cool. Um, if you get to month end and you're struggling for cash, and but you know you've got to pay supplies in a certain order, well you can set the priority of those supplies here. Now by default they're set to zero and zero means blank, but one is the highest priority. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. So go through your top vendors and number them in the priority that you wish to pay those suppliers. And I'll just show you how that works now. So, But once you've set the payment method code up, that's really all that you need to do on the vendor side. But if I go back to the payment journal and I go to run this suggest vendor payments again, you see under show more, we get these extra features. And what we can do is turn on use vendor priority and I can tell the system how much cash I actually have spare. So if we have 10 grand or 15 grand spare at the end of the month and we want to pay, we basically want the system to tell us who to pay first based on the priority. If I type this value in here and then run the journal again, it will look at all of the suppliers that have the payment method code, which we've filtered to. It will then look at all the suppliers' priorities and it will look at what we owe each supplier and what we have available. And it will then suggest payments for you. So once you get this set up and you get um, you start using this, this can save a significant amount of time um, at the end of each month. And it's a much better way of doing things. The precursors are that your ledgers are already perfectly reconciled because whatever is on your ledger is what's going to be suggested here. And it's very important that that does match your statement. So um, I hope that helps. If you have any questions, then let me know. Thank you.